Hi all, this is Dana. In this video I'm going to be showing you a quick finishing technique that I've been using on some of my um, newest patterns. These are design samples. Uh, the patterns will be released very, very soon, within the next week I'm hoping. Uh, I've got things like a needle book here, you can see, got little needles and stuff in it. Uh, a business card holder, credit card holder, uh, I've got a scissor case and a scissor fob. So um, what I've been doing is some of these I've been doing on a sewing machine, like stitching up the seams, and some of them I've been stitching by hand. And uh, recently I was in a, a craft store and uh, was looking at some of the older um, cross-stitch patterns they had lying around just out of curiosity. And I noticed that some of them uh, were things for like uh, pin cushions or uh, little key fobs or scissor fobs, like this kind of thing. And so the patterns were fine, but then they didn't actually have any instructions for how to finish them, like how to make them into this finished product. So I thought that was kind of stupid, because that's sort of assuming that a lot of people know what to do and they maybe don't. So I thought in this video what I'm going to be actually teaching you is uh, what's called slip stitch or blind stitch. I'm sure a lot of you know how to do this already, but for those of you who don't, it's a really, really good stitch for learning how to finish your uh, cross stitch projects. Obviously if you're just uh, framing it, stretching it and framing it and putting it in a frame, then um, there's, you know, you don't really need to do much finishing, but if you're making a 3D object, like a little business card holder that's got a lining and stuff in it, um, learning a slip stitch is actually really helpful because you can stitch these edges by hand and as you can see you can't really see them. I'm just gonna focus here a little bit. You can't really see the edges that like where the, it's actually been stitched you can't see any thread. So that's called the blind stitch or the slip stitch. So that's what I'm gonna be teaching you and uh, to do that I'm gonna be doing this little project here. It's just gonna be a little mini Sorry if it keeps going in and out of focus. Little mini um, scissor fob, key fob holder thing. So uh, I made my little stitching here. Isn't it cute? And I've got a piece of uh, pink felt that's going to be on the back. And I actually made a little cord that's going to be the holder. Uh, this is actually just, I don't know if you can quite see it. I'll zoom in a little bit. Yeah, it's going to zoom in it's too small. Um, it's basically just a braided cord I made out of some leftover floss that I had lying around so it's just a three braid. So yeah, you can also buy some really nice cord. I've seen some really beautiful projects particularly with pin cushions and biscornu which is like a type of pin cushion object thing that where people buy some like really nice cord and they they can actually slip stitch it along the edges like that. It would be a little bit thicker than this obviously. But yeah, so slip stitch is a really really good um, basic sewing uh, stitch to know and it's also fabulous for things like hemming your pants or say if you have a collar on a shirt that keeps sticking up and it's making you crazy and you want to stitch it down but you don't want the stitching to be sewn, shown, uh, this is a really good stitch for it. So what I've got here is got my little piece and as you can see I've started to fold it along the edges where basically I'm wanting it to be sewn. So what you can do is you can finish these edges with uh, fray stop or fray check any of those kind of products if you like. I haven't for this one. So because it's so small and it's not a very complex project, I'm just doing this by hand, you could actually um, press these edges down with a an iron to get a nice clean, clean crisp edge, but I'm just sort of doing it by eye, pressing them down, basically just to give myself a bit of a line to stitch along. You can also pin these in place if you really need to. I'm probably just going to do this by hand. So once you've got your basic edges pressed, what you're going to be wanting to do is trim away a little bit of this extra fabric here because when you're folding it inside it's going to get a little bit uh, bulky. So what I'm going to do is just trim pretty much from the corner to corner where the fold folds are. You don't want to get too close to where you're actually going to stitch obviously because then you're going to run out of fabric, your fabric's going to start to fray, and that's never good. Yeah, so you don't have to be super, super precise with this, like you don't have to go crazy about it, but generally just chuck those little ends off. And in theory, uh, if I was using something other than felt for the backing, then I would uh, do the same thing. I would fold the edges in uh, to get ready to put on the back, but because this is felt and this doesn't fray, so I'm just going to use it as is. So what I'm going to do is fold two of these edges down. You can start seeing what I'm going to do. Flip it over. 
So like I said, if this was uh, another lining fabric like any of the fabrics I've used inside these, then I would be doing exactly the same thing, folding the edges under and then putting the two uh, wrong sides together. So you got your right sides on the outside of this. So you can pin it if you like. So I've got my needle. So this is an embroidery needle uh, rather than a tapestry needle. You can see it's got a much finer point on it and that's going to help you pierce your threads a lot easier. Uh, I would recommend using an embroidery needle rather than a tapestry needle. You can use a tapestry needle if you're doing um, into either even weave or Ada fabrics only, but if you're mixing your fabrics like you've got your Ada and then you've got your flo um, your felt or whatever other fabric you're using, it is easier to use an embroidery needle. And even if you're just using the uh, cross stitch fabrics, it is still easier to use an embroidery needle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got a little tiny knot in the end of this thread, so I'm just going to sort of stitch it in between. I'm basically just going to hide that little knot in the back and, until it just catches. And this is basically, basically just anchoring the thread slightly. It's going to catch it into the fabric a little bit. All right, so that's anchored. Tiny little stitch. So what a slip stitch is, is basically you're going to be catching a few little bits of the thread of the threads from this side and a little bit of the fabric from this side and back and forth and back and forth. So your stitching is actually going to basically lie in between the seam and it becomes pretty much invisible, which is why it's called also called blind stitch. So as an example, so in this case, because I'm using the felt, I'm going to be wanting to make sure I don't go completely through to this other side. If I was using a lining fabric that was folded over like this is, and I would be catching that inside part of it, I wouldn't be catching the outside piece of it at all. So make sure that's all lined up nicely. So I'm going to catch a little bit of the felt. Make sure you can see that. Just make sure it's focused. All right, so I'm going to catch a little bit of that. So this I'm just going to pull it all the way through first just to show you. You can actually do these in one stitch. And then you catch just opposite where your thread came out. You're going to catch just a tiny little bit of that fabric. And as you can see, I'm not doing it right on the top. I'm doing it a little bit into the, the gutter in between the two, um, the two fabrics. Make sure you can see that. So I'm just catching a few of those threads. And you pull, and you can see already that stitch has almost completely disappeared. And as you keep working, the fabric's going to get closer and closer to itself. Again, you go a little bit into the felt. And then a little bit into your Ada fabric. There you go. So you can see tiny little stitches, but it's almost invisible. So what, once you kind of get the hang of doing it individually like that, sorry, like that, uh, you can, what you can do is, sorry if I keep blocking the light a little bit, um, you can weave your needle in and then you can weave it around. So you're kind of bending your fabric a little bit like that and you can do a stitch like that. And that's actually going to make your stitches even more hidden. Pull it tight. There you go. So you can see as you keep working, the stitches kind of nestle into that gutter in between the two fabrics. So I'm catching a bit of the felt, and now I'm catching a little bit of the Ada fabric. And hey presto. There's that. So that's basically what you do. You'd work all your way around. Like obviously at this point I'm going to be folding this edge in and catching that. Sorry, folding this edge in and catching it into here as well. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is turning the video off and finishing this up. If you're doing this by sewing machine, you can do this as well. For something so small it's a little bit trickier on a sewing machine because you can't... Um, basically on a sewing machine what you'd be wanting to do is stitch, say it's a bigger piece, like you know maybe a couple inches square. You'd be wanting to stitch along your outer edge here 
So what you'd be doing is your fabrics would be right side together. So instead of right now they're right sides facing out, so that's your right side, that's your right side. If you're doing it on a sewing machine, it'd be reversed. So uh, in the patterns that I'll be releasing, I will be having uh, photo instructions of this, so it's going to be a lot clearer. But uh, a lot of the patterns that I'm releasing, uh, they're solid, either solid stitched right up to the edge of the piece, or there's a line of back stitch that you can follow. So basically what you do is your piece is your... Um, your top piece and your lining fabric would be face down towards each other and then you'd actually run your sewing machine along that line of back stitch. You can actually see quite clearly where the demarcation is between the back stitch and uh, just the, the excess fabric, your margin. So you'd be wanting to do that on about three, three and a half sides and then leave a gap because you're going to obviously want to turn it inside out to get this effect and then you're going to have to slip stitch it by hand, the, the little opening closed. So, yeah, so what I'm going to do is turn the video off and keep doing this by hand so you're not bored out of your mind watching me stitch in circles. And then I can show you how to finish it off and I will show you a neat little, how to attach my little loopy thing here. All right, just a moment. Alright, so here we are back at the end of this almost. So as you can see, I've stitched around three sides of this. You can see a little bit of the stitching every now and then, but for the most part, it, it will obviously depend on like how uh, delicate you're making your stitches, how small they are and whatnot, and how tight you're pulling this. I didn't want to pull this uh, thread too tight just because I thought it might actually uh, rip through the, the felt itself. But yeah, so I mean, it's a little practice and you're going to be absolutely perfect at it and it's a really really useful skill as I said not only for finishing your cross stitch and embroidery projects but just in general uh, for mending things repairing things around the home. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I haven't stitched the top edge here uh, so what I'm going to do is put my little uh, my little tassel in so this is what's going to hang it off of my scissors or off of a keychain or whatever floats your boat. Uh, so what you're going to do is uh, you want to whether you're using cord or whether you're using ribbon or uh, whatever it is that you're using, you want to make sure there's a knot or some kind of anchoring point at the bottom because that way it's going to make sure it doesn't accidentally get pulled out. So you're going to want to put that in there. You can either put it in the center of the top or on the side or on a, a corner. Whatever you like. It's your little project so you can do whatever you like with it. I'm just going to push that in with the tip of the scissors to make sure it's fully down inside. At this point too you can also um, put a little bit of uh, batting inside of it if you wanted to um, uh, make it a little bit padded. You could put stuff a little bit of uh, cotton batting inside or even a little bit of a, a, a q-tip or not q-tip, uh, cotton balls, things like that. Put a little bit of that in there and that would make it a little bit puffy which would be really cute as well. So you, go, you can see I've got my, my little cord there centered, ready to go. So what I'm going to be doing is finishing up stitching this but at the same time I'm going to be making sure that I catch um, catch the cord in the stitching. So as I'm stitching I'm going to be wanting to really double check and make sure that that cord is getting caught. Like Obviously you know this isn't something that's going to be super precious and like if it falls off of something or whatever it's not going to be a life and death situation obviously but I mean it is something you spent time on so you do want to make sure it's going to be anchored well enough that it's not going to fall apart on you. So I'm just pushing down the bit of the seam that's showing there. So I'm going to stitch around it. Yeah, so you can see there, I've got my threads, my needle going through the back of the felt. So I'm just about up to catching the cord. Yeah, so you can do all kinds of really neat things for the hangers. You can make beaded ones. You can get like lots of really neat beads at craft shops or even dollar shops. You can sometimes get some neat bead kits. You can even um, do things like at 
I'm a big fan of dollar shops, even though the products are usually not such good quality. But um, you can get some actually quite interesting. Sorry, I really can't see. Um, you can do things like grab like little kids' bracelets and things like that, like the little dollar shop bracelets and whatnot. You can actually turn those into quite neat, pretty little little hangers just by stitching them on and anchoring them. So as you can see, I'm going through. I'm going to go through this a couple of times just to make sure it's really well anchored. And obviously I'm using white thread to match the color of the, the Ada fabric. You could also use the hot pink, but I find the going with the color of your fabric is your of your stitched fabric is actually a little bit more recommended. It's going to blend in a little bit easier. And as you can see, I'm stitching right on the top of the fabric right now, but because I'm using white, it's not going to be shown. So there we go, got that nice and anchored. Sorry, I keep realizing I'm moving it out of the view of the camera. It's hard stitching around a camera, it turns out. There we go. So I'm just going to finish this up. There are two more stitches. So that's already been stitched from before when I started. And there you go. There we go, that's done. So yeah, what I'm going to do now is just finish off my thread, and one little trick that I have is I'll do a tiny little knot on the side, and then I'll actually run that thread through the piece itself, so that way you're not going to see any ends randomly sticking up, so I'll do one or two little mini knots, quite tight so they lie flush against the, the piece itself. And then what I'm going to do is actually run my needle through this piece here like this. So you don't really want it to run up into the front of it, but you can run it kind of under. You can kind of catch a little bit of the back of the fabric too, like I can feel the needles actually catching a little bit of the back of this fabric and come out the other end. And that way if your knot starts to come loose, you're not going to end up with a random little loose end of thread sticking out. Get your scissors. There you go. Cute little embroidered keychain fob. So yeah, that's it. So that's uh, how to do a slip stitch, uh, or as was called a, a blind stitch. If you have any questions, please do feel free to, to either let me know in the videos, or you can email me, you can contact me through the blog. There will be a blog post about this as well, and the link to that will be in the description below. And uh, I'll be linking as well to my other videos, like I did another uh, video about how to do a back stitch. so if you're looking at this and wondering how I did the actual little back stitch around the edge, I can link to that video as well. So yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. If you'd like to be uh, on the list to find out when uh, these uh, these other patterns here are about to get released, you can sign up at uh, handylittlegadget.ca slash join hyphen now. I'll put that link in the description as well. And that way you'll get notified as soon as the, uh, these patterns get released. Like I said, they should be really, really soon. And you'll also get a special offer that's only going to be for people in my VIP club. So yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Any comments, feedback, any other stitches you would like me to demonstrate, I'm totally okay with that. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Talk to you later. Bye for now.